Hello everyone and welcome back to another Luminar Neo tutorial. In today's video, I will show you how to easily create the highly requested autumn pastel look. In the first part of the video, I will show you how to create this look and after that we will save it as a preset so you can apply it to your own images. At the end of the video, I will also show you how to apply it to the portrait photos together with a little tip on how to edit the portrait and the rest of the image separately. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so if you're ready, we are starting right now. Now moving into Luminar Neo, where we're going to be creating the pastel look. Now we're gonna start here in the catalog module, where as you can see, we are looking at the sample files. Now a quick reminder that if you wanna follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the sample files now. If you have them ready, import them into Luminar Neo and we can start. So for the first edit, we're gonna be using this image right here with the nice alley. So let's select it and move it into the edit module. First thing we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be flattening the image and creating the base of the pastel look. To do that, we're gonna move our attention towards the main editing toolbar, where we're gonna start in the essential section and moreover in the develop tool. Starting here, we're gonna open the light section and black and white sections, and we're gonna first adjust our highlights, shadows, blacks, and whites. Well, with the highlights, we're just gonna bring them down and basically make the brighter parts of the image a little bit darker. So we're gonna crush them down, let's say somewhere between minus 60 or minus 70. Now to create the contrast and open the image even further, we're gonna do the opposite with the shadows. We're gonna actually increase them. So we're gonna bring more details out of the image. Now we don't wanna go crazy to plus 100, but again, somewhere around 60 or 70 will work well. Then moving into blacks and whites, we're gonna first adjust the blacks where we're gonna bring them up. So again, making them a little bit brighter. So I think somewhere around 50. And with the whites, we're gonna bring them down. Let's have a look. I think somewhere around minus 30 or minus 40. Now it looks very saturated and flat now. So if we have a look at the before and after, you can see what we're trying to create. However, we are not finished at all. Moving back into the develop tool, here we're gonna close the blacks and whites and also the light section, and we're gonna open the curves. Now, don't worry, we're not gonna be creating anything complicated. We're gonna be working with the two dots already available on the curve. Now we have our highlights and shadows. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the dot in the bottom left corner, and we're just gonna bring it up. And as you can see, as we're doing that, we are bringing even more brightness and making the image even more flat. So let's say that we're gonna start somewhere here. After that, we're gonna take the dot in the top right corner and we're gonna bring it towards the left. So by doing that, we're making the image brighter and again, much more flat. We are removing the contrast. So it's up to you how much of it you wanna apply. You may want to adjust it a little bit, but basically you're creating the same line which is already indicated on the curves, just shifting it towards the top left corner. So I think for me, something like this looks good. So that's it with the curves. And actually for the moment, that's it with the develop tool. One more time, let's have a look at the before and after by clicking on the eye icon in the top right corner of the tool. And since we finished with this tool, we can now close it and apply it to the image. Now moving on and looking at the image, by applying all these edits with the develop tool, we have also removed some of the details. So to bring them back, let's use the details and structure AI tool. Starting with the details, let's just open it. And for this edit, we're just gonna add something around 10 on each of these sliders, which will help to recover some of the details. After this, we can close the details tab and open the structure AI, where again, we can apply something between 10 or 15. 
just adding a little bit more clarity and details back to the image. Now, when you have a look at the before and after, the difference isn't huge. However, it will help to the overall look. So we are finished with the structure AI. So let's close it. And now we're going to move into the creative section where we're going to add even more fade and more of the cinematic look, improving the pastel look with the use of the matte tool. So let's open it. And what we're going to adjust is the amount slider and fade slider. Again, looking at your own image or thinking about your own idea of this image, we're going to increase the amount. For me, I think somewhere around 20. However, you can add even more if you want to or less. It really is up to you. But for me, 20 looks good. And to push the fade look even more on the image, let's take the fade slider and again, bring it somewhere around 20. As always, have a look at the before and after, and it's another of those subtle adjustments which will help to build the overall look. Now we are finished with the matte tool, so just like before, close it and apply. After this, looking at the photo and talking about the pastel look, I always like to add a little bit of cinematic toning. For this look, for this kind of saturated pastel look, I quite like to add a little bit of magenta. Now we can use multiple different tools to do it, but the easiest way to apply it is the toning tool. With the toning tool open here in the creative section, we're going to increase the amount slider all the way up and we first going to apply the toning into the shadows. So let's select it. After this, let's increase the saturation slider so we can see which color we are applying. And then we can take the hue slider and basically adjust it until we like the result. Now for me, looking at it magenta, I think somewhere around maybe 265 or even further, maybe that's a little bit too much. I think 268 looks good. However, of course, this is way too strong. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring the saturation down. So let's just apply maybe something around 20. Now remember the number 268. Eight. So now when we switch into the highlights, we can increase the saturation and then we can adjust the slider or we can also click on the little number here above you and just simply use the keyboard to key in the number. So 268. Once finished, just hit enter and that will apply the color immediately to the image. Again, we need to adjust the amount of the saturation using the saturation slider. So let's have a look at it. I think somewhere around 18 works well. Just as always, let's have a look at the before and after. And I think it really helps even further to enhance the pastel look. So now we're going to close the toning tool and we're going to continue. So there are two more things I would like to apply to the image. I would like to recover a little bit of the contrast. And to do that, we can use the powerful super contrast tool in the professional section of the toolbar. So let's go all the way to the bottom, open the super contrast tool. And here we simply going to adjust the highlights contrast and midtones contrast. So let's go ahead and increase the highlights contrast slider until we like the results. So for me, I think somewhere around 20. And for the midtones, let's have a look at it. Maybe not as high, maybe between 10 and 15. Well, maybe 15. Now let's have a look at the before and after, and that definitely helps. Maybe less of the highlights contrast, maybe 15, and again, before and after. So that's it with the super contrast. And finally, just to break down the overall flatness of the image, we're just going to use a simple vignette tool. So let's go ahead and open it, and we're going to bring the amount down just to add a little bit of the vignette to the image. So by doing that, we basically making sure that the center of the image is a little bit brighter and the outside of the image is a little darker. So that will break up the flatness. Now, I think somewhere around minus 40 or minus 45 will work quite well, but you can always again check the before and after. After this, we can close the vignette tool and we are finished with the look. So let's have a look at the before and after by clicking on the eye icon at the bottom of the screen. Or you can also use the little slider. So when you click on that, you can easily see 
what you created on your right and the previous image on your left. So there you have it. Now we have created the look. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go into the actions in the bottom left corner. We're going to click on that and we're going to click on save as preset. By doing that, we automatically move into the presets section where we are now in my presets folder. And now we can call these presets. So let's adjust the name into pastel saturated look. Once we finish choosing the name, just hit enter. And with that being done, let's move into the catalog module. Once we in the catalog module, let's select the second image and now move it into the presets. In the presets module, well, maybe you see this view or maybe your toolbar is looking like this. Well, what you need to do is to click on my presets and here you can see the preset we have created earlier. Now, when you hover over it, you will see how it gets applied to the image. If it's too strong, what you can do, you can click on it to apply it and then take the slider and adjust it. So let's say that for this image, we're just going to apply something like 50. Again, just like before, you can check the before and after using the little eye icon at the bottom of the screen. Finally, before we're going to finish, I want to show you how you can apply this look to the portrait images. So let's do that. Let's go into the catalog module. We're going to select the image with the lady on it, move it into the presets module, again, navigate into my presets and select the image. Again, you can adjust the amount using the slider. So it's up to you how much you want to apply. But for me, something like 90 or 95 will work well. With that being done, we can now move it into the edit module. Now looking at it, you can see that basically it looks very nice on the trees and around, but obviously it adjusts the face, skin tones, and also the color of the clothes. If you're happy with it, you can leave it that way. However, we can also adjust it so we can apply the overall look only to the background and keep the portrait or the model without the edits. Now to do this, we're going to navigate towards the layers panel where we're going to right click on the image and select duplicate layer. With the new layer added, we're now going to navigate towards our main editing toolbar. Here go into the masking and in the masking, we're going to click on background removal. Once we do that, the application will scan the image and create automatic mask to remove the background. With that being done, you can select any of the options here. But for us, I think the mask looks quite good by selecting the main object. So we're just going to click on remove. Now the application will remove the background and all we're going to have left is the model. With that being done, we can return into the properties. And in the properties, we're going to go into the edits and here we're going to click on discard edits. So basically it will remove all the edits from the model. So let's do that. One click and second click just to remove everything. And now back to the tools. Now it doesn't look great, right? We have the model, which doesn't really blend with the rest of the image. So finally, what you can do, we can go into the layer properties and we can adjust the opacity slider and bring it down until the model and the portrait part of the image start to blend a little bit further with the new edited background. So for me, somewhere around 60, or you can go further, it's up to you. But I think somewhere between 50 or 60 looks really good. So now let's close the layer properties. And again, let's have a look at the before and after. Now, before we're going to finish, I want to quickly remind you that this tutorial was powered by our Luminar Neo Autumn Bundle. Now, this incredible bundle includes over 721 new Autumn elements to power up your Luminar Neo tools. Once you get it, you will get high definition presets, LUTs, skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, frames and working layers to transform your autumn images with just a few clicks. Now to get it for the best possible price, use the link in the description of this video. And to find out more about it, head to our website cleverphotographer.com. And just like that, we have finished with today's tutorial. 
If you enjoyed it, please make sure that you give it a like. And if you have any questions about today's topic or Luminar Neo, then write them into the comment section under this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future content. For today, my name was Jacob Bors and I can't already wait to see you in our future videos.